Okay, right. Um, welcome uh, along this evening, um, everybody, um, for this introduction to bumblebees and bumblebee identification. Uh, my name is Alice Parfit. Um, I'm a conservation officer with Bug Life. Um, and also I'm going to tell you a little bit about our, our bumblebees this evening. I'm going to talk for around sort of 40, 45 minutes. Um, and um, if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat or we can, uh, you can ask them at the end. You can um, unmute yourself. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, get, um, let's get going then, I think. Right, so um, this webinar has been um, funded by Network Rail as part of its um, Greater WESP programme. Uh, so they are hoping to achieve no net loss for Forest Farm and it's a site managed by the Wildlife Trust. So that's a, a thank you to our funders as well. Um, so our bee basics really, um, what, are, what are bees? Um, well, uh, Bees belong to the order Hymenoptera, um, and this includes all of our bees, wasps and ants, and then they uh, belong to the suborder Aculeates, which are, just means that they are stinging insects. And actually the um, sting is actually a modified um, laying, um, egg laying tube. So it, this does mean that it's just the females that um, can sting, so the ma males don't um, sting us at all. And out of all of our bees, the honeybee is actually the one that has a barbed sting, which means that it um, it pulls the sting out once it's stung, so it, it does die. Um, whereas all of our other bees, um, this doesn't um, happen. All of our bees um, need floral resources to get um, nectar, um, and that's what gives them the energy, the adults, the energy to um, keep going. Um, and they also collect um, uh, pollen um, for their larval stages um, from flowers as well. So floral resource is really, really important. And also all bees have a proboscis um, to suck up the nectar. And they also have um, branched hairs, which is actually um, a really important adaptation that they have for um, collecting pollen, which we'll sort of see how important that is um, um, a little bit uh, later. So most of our bees actually collect um, dry pollen, but our bumblebees, um, which we'll see in a little bit, actually uh, moisten pollen with a little bit of nectar as well to create these sticky balls, which enables them um, to collect more, uh, collect more pollen. And this can actually be really sort of um, noticeable on a, on a bumblebee's legs. So um, as I mentioned, all of our bees are um, considered pollinators as they visit flowers to collect um, nectar and, and pollen. Um, and there's an incredible diversity of bees uh, within um, the UK. Um, they have different sort of nesting preferences, uh, food preferences, habitat requirements um, and, and so on. And they can also look very different um, in appearance. So we've got over 275 species um, in the UK. 24 of those are bumblebees, which is obviously what we're going to have a little look at um, this evening. Um, we've got one species of honeybee and we've got um, around 250 species of solitary bee. Um, and that number of solitary bees particularly is, is changing all the time as we sort of find new species um, and um, you know, some declines as well, but new species coming from the continent. So that's, that is actually sort of quite a fluctuating um, uh, number really. So we're gonna start off just very quickly um, showing you a honeybee. So we have just one species in this country, um, Apis um, mellifera. So this is a social bee and they, they live in a colony that has a, a queen and workers. Um, and we tend to think of them as being a, a domesticated bee. So we're all sort of familiar with, with this bee uh, that lives in uh, hives and, and produces honey. And actually the production of, of honey is quite an important point as, as this allows the colony to um, survive the winters. They've got um, the food source, which as we'll see a, a, in a little while is, is something that um, bumblebees don't do. Um, and the reason I've got this, this uh, picture up here particularly is that it's a good picture of what a pollen basket looks like. And this is on 
the hind legs of females. Um, and this is where they collect the pollen to take back to the nest to feed the young. Um, and, and I've put this one in here because um, honeybees also have this pollen basket here on the hind legs. So that's a really good one to sort of look out for when we're trying to identify our, our bumblebees. So that's our one species of honeybee. Um, these are um, solitary bees. And as I mentioned, we've got over 270 species. And as you can see from this slide, they do vary in appearance somewhat. Some are very wasp-like, some are sort of quite fluffy and small and look a bit like a bumblebee. So you can see the hairy-footed flower bee up there on the top right, that looks um, very much like a small bumblebee. Um, and they're very variable, as I said, in their appearance, but also in their habits and how they nest. Um, and many people aren't really aware of, of this group of species, so they do go um, sort of under the radar a little bit, but they're, they're fascinating, but one for um, another time, uh, really. Um, so um, rather than having pollen baskets, our solitary bees have what are called pollen brushes. So this is how um, we can sort of differentiate between our bumblebees and our, our solitary bees that might look a bit like um, um, bumblebees. So bumblebees have this pollen basket like the, we just saw on the honeybee, whereas solitary bees have this, this pollen brush, which are essentially just these um, sort of branched hairs um, that are called scopa that collect the dry, oh, dry pollen, sorry. Oh, sorry about that, just uh, flipping on a, a little bit too quickly. Um, so yeah, so they have pollen brushes, which is just these hairs that collect um, the pollen. So they don't have um, a, 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 pollen bar, uh, a pollen basket, which is this flat, shiny area. So our bumblebees, let's move on to our, our bumblebees. So these are um, a fairly easily recognizable group. Um, they tend to be large, um, quite sort of densely furry bodies as well. And we've got around 250 species um, worldwide. Um, most are found sort of in the cooler regions of the Northern Hemisphere, um, particularly sort of around the, the Himalayas because they're, they're very well adapted uh, to cooler conditions with, with these large hairy bodies. Um, and they're also able to warm their um, own, own bodies as well. As I, I've just talked about pollen uh, baskets, as we saw with the honeybee, so that flat, shiny area surrounded by um, hairs, which are just on the hind leg of the females, which is where um, they collect the pollen. So I haven't got another picture um, of, of those, um, but hopefully um, the honeybee demonstrated that quite well. So we've got 24 species in the UK. 18 of these are what we call social uh, bumblebees. So they live in a colony. So that's made up of a queen and her worker daughters. And the workers sort of tend the nest, um, feed the young um, and sort of yeah, generally look after things, which I, I will talk about in a bit more depth in a little, little while. But we also have six species of what we call cuckoo bees. Um, and just like the bird, um, the cuckoo bee sneaks um, into the bumblebee nest, the social bumblebee nest, lays her eggs there, and then the workers of the um, original bumblebee nest actually um, tend to them. So the female cuckoo bee um, doesn't um, provide for any of her offspring. She therefore doesn't need to collect um, uh, any pollen, which is obviously quite a, um, a big difference between our social bumblebees. Um, so our social bumblebees are divided into queens, her worker daughters, um, and males. Um, and because the um, cuckoo bumblebees don't, um, don't uh, look after their own young, they're just divided into male and female. And when we come on to look at um, some of identifying some of the bumblebees, that's quite an important um, uh, point to think about is that for our social bumblebees, we've got three types um, of species of species that we need, um, three types of cast within each species that we might need to identify. Whereas for cuckoo bumblebees, we've just got the two, just males and, and females. Um, our cuckoo bumblebees tend to be host specific. Um, so um, 
they'll just sort of um, lay their eggs in one particular social bumblebee nest or maybe in two or three um, um, uh, nests. And um, although um, they're obviously um, a sort of uh, limiting that particular social bumblebee nest, they don't really have any impact at a po population level as they're present at much lower um, levels. So just a very sort of quick um, introduction to our uh, sort of social versus cuckoo bumblebees. So this is um, what we're looking for on the hind leg of uh, our bees. This is what we're looking for. So on the left here, we've got um, a social bees um, hind leg. So this is the females, so the queens and the workers. Um, they have this flattish, um, shiny, hairless um, area on the hind leg, free, uh, surrounded by these really long hairs, and that's where she collects the pollen. And on the right, we've got um, our cuckoo bees hind leg, female cuckoo bees hind um, leg. Um, no pollen basket, so hasn't got this flat, shiny area, and it is all covered in hairs. Um, and if you um, catch a bee in a pot and have a look with a hand lens, you can see this difference um, quite um, quite easily, actually. But it's definitely something to get get your eye in on. So bumblebees are really important um, pollinators. Um, of both wildflowers and crops. Uh, lots of other species are involved in pollination too. So things like hoverflies um, and, and, and other flies and our solitary bees as well, all really Im important. But um, bumblebees are very effective um, pollinators actually. And they have this um, amazing thing called, called buzz pollination. And this is just the vibration of their, their bodies um, which basically dislodges um, the pollen from, from some plant species. So um, things like potatoes, tomatoes, um, um, blueberries, um, which other um, insects um, can't do. So bumblebees are essential for the pollination of, of particular um, plants. So um, unfortunately, um, there are um, declines in our bumblebees, um, as they're in are in all of our sort of pollinating species. We've cu currently got 24 species in in the UK. Two have already um, gone extinct, and we have two on the brink of extinction. Um, several species are are declining in range, um, and some species, common species, probably aren't as abundant as they once were. There are also um, some that are expanding. So we've got recent colonists, for example, which I'll touch on in, in a bit later, but generally um, bumblebees are, are, a lot of our bumblebees are declining. So to um, start off, it's quite um, a good idea just to have a little look at the um, ecology of our, our bumblebees because understanding their behavior and what they do through um, the year can really help with sort of um, our identification. And we've got this wonderful um, illustration from our friends at the Bumblebee Conservation Trust, which does a, a really good job of just going through um, the life cycle. So bumblebees have a, an annual life cycle. Um, really their, their strategy to survive the winter is really just for um, the queen to hibernate alone and then the colony um, dies off. And they um, tend to hibernate in areas, um, sort of north facing banks, um, tussocky grassland, somewhere where it's going to be quite sheltered and sort of constant temperature for one. So on the top left there, that's diagram one, that's our, our queen bumblebee, um, who's gonna come out of hibernation in, in the spring, She'll have mated the previous autumn or summer um, and is able to carry that sperm around with her until it's needed um, in the spring. So when she e emerges um, in early spring, um, she's obviously gone uh, the winter without food um, or probably gone the winter without food. Some obviously do, do wake up a little bit and have a, have a forage if it's warm, but generally they don't. Um, so she needs some really early um, nectar resources. So things like willow, which is, which is sort of shown here, um, is really important. Um, and things like uh, blackthorn as well, and plants in the garden, things like crocuses and comfries and, and primroses can be very important too. So she needs to 
feed up on nectar to uh, build up her, her strength again. And then she looks for a new nest site. So it will be somewhere, um, uh, it might be sort of tussocky grassland or um, old small mammal holes in tussocky grassland or at the base of hedges again. Um, or for some species, they do actually nest airily. So in, in bird boxes, for example. Once she's found a nest site, um, she collects pollen. And in picture three, um, that's actually a ball of pollen underneath um, the queen bumblebee there, uh, into which she lays a batch of her eggs. Um, and then you've got this little cup um, next to her. And this is a wax cup that she, um, she creates and then uh, fills with regurgitated nectar. And she feeds on that nectar while she sits and broods the eggs. Um, she might occasionally leave the nest at this point to go out and collect um, pollen and nectar, but generally she just sort of um, sits there all alone. And then this first batch of bees hatch um, and um, the grubs obviously eat that ball of pollen that the queen has provided. Um, after several weeks, they, they pupate, pupate and eventually um, the worker bees emerge. Now, all of these worker bees um, will be female. Um, so um, they're basically the, the queen's daughters. They'll be smaller than the queen's, um, but in most spe species, but not all because there are exceptions to absolutely everything, um, they look the same as, as the queen, um, but just a bit smaller. So the worker's job is really just to go out, um, collect more pollen to bring back um, to the next um, batch of grubs um, uh, and nectar. They collect nectar as well to sustain themselves while the queen essentially stays in the nest and lays more eggs to increase the colony size. Um, so the workers also tend the nest and, and feed uh, the new larvae as, as they um, emerge. So the workers are out doing, doing all of the work at this stage. And then towards the end of the nest cycle, some of the um, eggs that the queen lays um, don't turn into worker daughters, but turn into male bees and new young queens. Um, once they've hatched, the males um, leave uh, the nest and don't return um, and go out to find uh, a new queen to mate with from another colony. And then these new queens also um, go out and um, yeah, feed up, um, they find a mate, sorry, to begin with, find a mate um, to mate with, and then they, um, once they've mated, they feed up um, ready to hibernate again. So again, late forage for our bumblebees is, is really important too. Um, the queen hibernates um, over winter again, and um, the rest of the colony that, um, dies off. So knowing how this life cycle works can really sort of help us understand what bees are up to when we see them. Um, yeah, all really just, yeah, useful, useful tips um, on, on how to identify them, which we'll come on to in a little bit. So, yeah, just to um, reiterate what um, bumblebees actually need, they need an unbroken food supply um, from March when they emerge right over to um, October when they start to hibernate again. They need somewhere to nest. As I said, disused mammal holes are, are really good. Tarsi grassy um, tussocks, um, tree holes, open grassland, and again, these hibernation um, sites, which are often north facing, um, quite sheltered and sort of constant um, temperature um, as well. So how do we go about actually identifying uh, bumblebees if we've um, found um, them? We've already had a quick look um, at the importance of looking for uh, that pollen basket on the on the hind leg. Um, but again, just to reiterate, that's just in the females and the workers, not in the males. So all bumblebees have three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings. Um, and that's the same um, uh, with all other bees, so our solitary bees um, as, as well. But what else do we need to look at? So we need to have a look at the colour um, of the head, um, the thorax, so that's the, the middle section, and also the abdomen. 
we need to have a little look at um, the face. So we have um, uh, bees that have different um, shaped faces. Some are very long in the face because they have long tongues. Um, some are very um, short in the face. This um, uh, affects which plants they actually can get their nectar from as well. Um, there might be um, coloured hairs on their face, um, particularly in, in males. So that's something else to look out for. Um, we need to look how many coloured bands there are on the body. And this is on the both on the thorax and the abdomen. And it's normally not two or three. So you can see we've got two in this, this picture. And we also need to have a little look um, at um, what colour its tail is and, and whether um, um, it's a tip or the tip or it's covering a bit more of, of the bottom of the abdomen. So how do we know um, whether we've actually got a bumblebee? Because there are some bumblebee lookalikes um, out there just to confuse us. So here we've got a uh, bumblebee on the left and um, a hoverfly. Um, on the right. So our hoverfly is a very good mimic of our bumblebee um, and it just does that as a sort of defensive um, me mechanism and it's, it's doing a very good job. Um, the things that we're looking out for are that bees have two pairs of wings. Um, hoverflies, as in all flies, have just one pair of wings. Obviously if you see something zoom past it's quite difficult to tell sometimes but that's what we're, we're looking out for. Um, the bee generally looks a, a little um, chunkier and has sort of slightly um, thicker legs. Um, but we also want to look at the antennae. So bees have these nice long antennae, which you can see on the left, whereas uh, hoverflies um, uh, tend to have short antennae and sometimes they're quite sort of um, sort of feathered like this one here is. But they're not they're not long like a, a bee. So that's a really important to to look out for. And then the other thing that we want to look at is what the eyes um, look like. So our bumblebee has got quite small eyes, tend to be on the side of the face. Um, and then the eyes on our hoverfly are really quite, um, quite large. They take up a lot of the head. This is actually a female. Um, on, on the males, they take the eyes take up even more of, um, um, of the head as well. So they're much, much bigger. So we're looking for antennae, um, the eyes, and, the, and how many wings it's got. And um, they're, they're the important, important ones to look out for. Um, and then once we have a bumblebee, do, how do we know whether we've got um, a male or a female bumblebee? And then whether the female is actually a queen uh, or a worker. So we've already um, said that the queens and the workers have our um, pollen baskets. So we've just got a couple of diagrams and photos of, of what um, pollen baskets look like um, again. So that's the really the first one to thing to look out for. Um, so the shape of the legs will, will really tell you. Often you'll see the queens and workers with pollen on their legs so that actually helps. You're not even just looking for, for a pollen basket. Um, but obviously do be aware that our female cuckoo bees don't have, have them and won't be collecting um, pollen. So um, we need to look at the antenna. Um, so these are longer in, in males. Um, and this is true in, in all species. So the, the male have longer antennae um, than, than females. Um, our queen bumblebees are noticeably larger than the workers or, and the males. So that's another really good one um, to um, look out for once you've, when you've got your eye in. And the males of some of our um, species can have yellow hair on their heads and um, uh, faces. So the behaviour of the bee can also help. Um, we looked at the ecology of, of the bumblebees. And that can give us some tips. So queens emerge from hibernation in early spring. So they're normally the first bees that we, we see. Um, and they tend to be quite well marked. And they can be quite bright at that time of year. And you, you'll really sort of notice them searching for nest sites. They look quite sort of, um, yeah, like they're on a bit of a mission, really. Um, the workers, they often look like uh, smaller versions of, of the queen. And they're seen in increasing numbers as we um, progress through uh, the spring and uh, the summer. Um, they're quite variable in size, um, but
but they always appear to be very um, busy as they've got lots to do. And then our males are seen in increasing numbers through um, summer onwards. Um, and remember, they don't come out until the first sort of batch of workers is, is already out. Um, and compared to the workers, they're a bit sort of lazy. They do tend to um, sit on flowers a bit more um, and just sort of wait to, to find a queen um, to mate with, rather than sort of having to get involved with all, all the work um, and looking after the colony. Quite often the males are, are sort of fluffier than the, the females. And as I said, they um, have this, some of them have this bright yellow um, facial hair as well. In fact, four of our common species that we're, we're gonna have a, a, a look at in a minute um, uh, have this, this bright yellow hair, which is a really good ID tip. So queens are a really good um, place to um, start identifying bumblebees. And we're going to look at look at these uh, in a bit more detail and then a little bit of a look at our workers and our males, too. So we've got, again, this is from Bumblebee Conservation Trust. We've got this really good diagram of what we're looking for in our queens. So we can see um, different numbers of bands. I'm going to go through each of these um, in turn. We've got different amounts of um, bands on each of them, but different colours uh, of the um, thorax and abdomen, different colour tips to the tail. So that's what we're, we're sort of um, looking out for. So this is our buff-tailed bumblebee queen, Bombus terrestris, and she's big. Um, it's a very common species and she is the first one to emerge in the spring. And she has two orangey um, yellow, sort of quite a, a deep yellow orange uh, bands, one on her thorax and one on her abdomen. Um, the one on the abdomen is not right at the top of the abdomen, so there's a bit of black between um, uh, the top of the abdomen and, and the yellow band. And in this photo you can actually see the, the um, orangey band on the thorax is actually quite reduced in, in this one. So just to be aware that this is, um, this can be variable. Um, and then the tip of her tail is, is an off-white, it's, it's hence the name buff-tailed. It's never a, a really clean, snowy white um, colour at all. And then these are um, um, what the, the workers and, and the males look like. So um, we've got the diagrams again to help us and photos of both of them. So in the photos, we've got the queen at the top and then the worker and, uh, and male. Um, at the bottom. So the workers are, are similar to the queen, but the, but the um, tails can be a, a much cleaner white, um, though sometimes they're a bit, a bit buffish. So they're similar, but have a, a, a smaller and, um, and a bit, uh, the tail is a bit whiter really. And as I said, males are similar to the workers in, in this species, difficult to tell them apart and um, that's really one for a, a more advanced uh, webinar for, for the time being. I think it's just safe to say they're, they're difficult um, to tell apart. Um, so our next species is the white-tailed um, bumblebee. So she's a very similar shape, so this is the queen, very similar shape and pattern to our buff-tailed bumblebee. Um, but the yellow bands are um, much more sort of lemony yellow, so they're not an orangey yellow like we had in our, our buff tail. Um, and um, she's got this lovely snowy white tail, so always a really clean white tail um, compared to the buff tail of our, uh, of our buff tail bumblebee. And the queens and uh, the workers are, are very similar in this species. So um, they both have the two yellow bands um, with a lovely white tail, but the workers are much smaller. So that's the one to look out for. Males are much more distinctive, which I hope you can um, see in this one. Um, they're one of the ones that I mentioned have this um, lovely yellow head, um, face. Um, they can be um, a little bit variable but generally they have um, uh, a lot more yellow than the females. So essentially if you have a bee with a, a really nice white tail, lots of yellow on its on its body like that, um, so uh, both on bands on both the abdomen and, and the thorax, 
and has a yellow face, then it's it's a male white-tailed bumblebee. So they're a really nice, actually distinctive one. Um, so one thing to note is that the buff-tailed bumblebee and the white-tailed bumblebee workers are incredibly difficult to tell apart in the field. So we often just lump them to, together and sort of record them um, as, a, as an aggregate, really. Um, so in, in this species, our, our white-tailed bumblebee, the queen is distinctive, um, the males are distinctive, but the workers are difficult to identify from our buff-tailed bumblebee. So our next one that we're going to look at um, is our red-tailed bumblebee, Bombus lapidarius. Uh, and again, this is a really nice um, distinctive one. So a really good one to get to know when you are um, starting out. Um, there are a couple of rarer species that look um, similar, um, but certainly when you're starting out, we don't even need to um, think about um, those. Um, as you'll have to go out and look for them very specifically in, in, in specific areas. So the queens are this lovely um, all black, um, so no bands on, on them whatsoever, um, and have this lovely red tail um, that covers probably about a third of the abdomen. So it's not just the tip of, of the tail. So very distinctive um, queens. Um, so this is a worker that we've got on the, the top, the photo um, on the top. So that's a worker, um, very similar to the queens, but um, smaller. Um, I'm seeing lots of these around at the moment um, in the garden and, and lots of places, um, actually. They're, they're very, very common at the moment. And then the males look different to both the um, queens and, and the worker. So the males are, are black with a red tail again as in the queens and the workers, but they also have this yellow band um, on the thorax and again, this lovely yellow hairs um, on its face. So that's um, a male uh, in the photo on the bottom left and you can really see the amount of that yellow on it, but this lovely um, red tail as, as well. So yeah, really nice and, and distinctive. This is our early bumblebee. And um, probably the thing you'll notice about the queen the most, obviously um, this, this um, photo doesn't show it, but it's a much, much smaller bumblebee um, than most of the, the others, certainly the ones that, that we're looking at today. And that does actually make it quite obvious in the field. Um, and as the name suggests, it's, um, it emerges early in, this, uh, in the season, um, around the same time as our buff tail bumblebee. It's quite a fluffy bee. Um, and it's uh, a bit different in its behaviour because it sort of um, tends to be, uh, it's another one of these bees that's uh, are quite busy, it zips around between flowers quite fast, so that, that can help sort of just pick it up. It has um, two yellow bands, so one on the thorax and one on the abdomen again, and it has this small red tip to the tail, but unlike the red-tailed bumblebee that we just looked at, this really is just the um, tip of the tail and um, it can fade quite fast and it can be that sometimes you need to get it sort of just at the right angle to be able to see this um, see this um, red tip as well. So this is an interesting species as all three of the casts are different um, so that's quite un unusual. Um, the queen we've obviously just just had a, a look at um, uh, but interestingly, the workers in this species are, are not just smaller versions of, of the queen. Um, the workers can be a little bit variable, but generally they don't have that um, second yellow band on, on the abdomen. Although um, sometimes you will see some yellow hairs, as you can sort of see in this, this diagram. Um, so it sort of um, gives a, a hint of a band, but it's not, it's really not a proper band at all. Um, and the workers of, of the early bumblebee can be incredibly um, small. So, so again, that's, that's something to uh, look out for. Um, the males are different again from, from the queens and, and the workers. Um, and again, another one of our species that have this lovely yellow facial hair, and they tend to have a, a lot of yellow around the abdomen, around the head and, and uh, the collar. Um, but again, this, this can be variable and they have this uh, red, red tip to the, to, uh, to the tail. So this is uh, the male, the photo on, on the bottom right. You can see how sort of 
fluffy it looks and the amount of yellow with that tiny bit of sort of um, red tip to the tail. I always think um, the um, tips of, of, of the tail of the early bumblebee just look very washed out compared to our red tail um, uh, bumblebee. So this is um, our common carder bee, Bombus pastorum. Um, this is one of our all ginger bumblebee species. This is the queen here. We do uh, again have a couple of rare lookalikes um, for this species, but um, this, this is our, our common all ginger species, the common carder bumblebee. Really common in, in gardens, and you can see this one quite late into the year as well. And it likes, um, likes deep flowers, so you'll often see it on things like clovers, trefoils, vetches, that sort of thing. Um, it does have some dark hairs um, on its abdomen at, at the top. Um, um, that's one of the ways we, we differentiate it from some of the, the rare similar species. Um, and all of the casts look similar in, in this species. So the queens, the workers and the males all look um, similar, but they can all be variable with um, varying amounts of, of black hairs on, on the abdomen um, and the thorax and the sort of ginger colour can be variable um, as well. So sometimes it can be very light um, and sometimes it can be um, quite a lot darker. Um, the males do emerge later in the season and, and can look very sort of bright and fresh compared to um, the work workers. So sometimes they look as if they, they should be a different species or something, but um, just be aware that, um, yeah, bee bees fade as, as they go through um, the season. So this is um, our tree bumblebee. So this is a really distinctive bumblebee. Um, has a ginger thorax, black abdomen, white tail. And this is um, the species that I, I sort of briefly alluded to um, earlier, um, because this is a, a relatively recent natural um, colonist to the UK. So it's been in the country probably about 20 years, I think it is. So it's just colonized from um, Europe. It's one of our few bumblebees that likes to nest airily, so uh, above ground rather than sort of holds it in the ground. So it likes to nest in bird boxes. I've actually seen them in dormouse boxes as well, but they'll also use other structures. So, you know, um, um, holes in trees, that, that sort of thing. Um, and if you see bees gathering around a hole, so whether that's a, a tree or a, a bird box, um, this will be um, males of this species waiting for the females um, to come out. And, and this is often behavior that's, that's noticed by um, people with bird boxes and, and that sort of thing. And all of the three cars, so our queens, our workers and our males are the same for this, this species. So a really um, nice, easy one to, to get your um, eye in. Um, because there are always exceptions to everything. There is a melanic form of this species where the, the thorax is, is black in, instead of ginger, but um, uh, generally they're a nice easy one to um, identify. And so this is the, the last one of our sort of big seven and, and they're sort of our, our sort of common seven uh, bumblebees that um, are good ones to just start learning and try, trying to um, identify. So this is another one of um, the bumblebees uh, with a white tail, but uh, it actually has three yellow um, bands rather than the two that we saw in the buff tail bumblebee and the queen um, and the queen white tail bumblebees. So it's actually got two on its um, thorax, so one at the top near its head and then one at the base and then another band on the top of its abdomen. But do be careful when in flight, for example, um, the band at the bottom of the thorax and the one at the top of the abdomen just look like one big band. Um, so you do have to look at them a, a little bit more um, carefully. And they've got this nice uh, white tip to the tail as well. So here we go, this is, um, um, all our cast, they all look the same in this one. So queens, workers um, and males all look similar with the three yellow bands. And you can see in, in these two photos um, a little bit better um, the, the separation of those two yellow 
uh, bands. Um, the workers are just smaller versions of, of the queens, as we've seen in, in most of our, our species, um, and, and males look uh, pretty similar. Not always, they can sometimes have a slightly sort of striped look to, to their tail, but generally um, they're, they're the same. Um, and this is one of our, our long tail, uh, our long faced um, species. Um, so I've just put a diagram in of, of its face there and also um, a photo. Um, because actually when you see this and if you if you get a um, get one of these up close, you can really notice that it's got a, a long face and um, that's because it's got a really long tongue. So it's very good at feeding on uh, sort of deep flowered, um, um, deep tubed flowers, sorry. So things like foxgloves, you'll often see them on, on those sorts of things. So yeah, the face shape really, um, really distinctive. So that's a very brief look at our, um, our sort of seven common bumblebees. And I'm just going to very, very briefly uh, mention again our cuckoo bumblebees. So we've got six species of, of cuckoo bumblebees. And as I said before, these are species that find the nest of um, social queen bumblebees, go in, lay their eggs, and then use the, the workers of, of that nest to uh, raise their young. So most cuckoo bumblebees do prey on nests of a particular bumblebee species, um, or in some cases, maybe, maybe two or three. Um, and as I said earlier, we need to check whether they've got um, pollen baskets. But another thing to just sort of keep an eye out for um, is that they generally have um, darker wings than social bumblebees. So I'm just going to show just one species of our, our cuckoo um, bumblebee. This is um, the Vestal cuckoo bee. Um, this preys on the nest of a buff-tail bumblebee, and you can see that this female looks very similar to a queen um, buff-tail bumblebee. She's as big um, as, as the buff-tail bum bumblebee, but she only has one um, yellow band, so the one yellow band on her thorax. She doesn't have one um, on the abdomen at all, and she has this white tail. It's probably a little bit whiter than the buff-tail bumblebee, but has got um, these two yellow side patches that you can just sort of um, see in this, this photo here on either side of, of that white patch. So um, it does give it a sort of off-white um, colour, but it's just on each side. So if you actually get a view from the top um, that, um, uh, yeah, you can, you can see that it, the yellow doesn't, doesn't go um, all the way across. The yellow does fade, um, but should always uh, be present. So. Um, that's a whistle stop tour through our, our uh, bumblebees, an introduction to bumblebees. There's lots of really, really good um, resources out there that you can um, um, use to try and um, identify um, uh, bumblebees. Bumblebee Conservation Trust has got lots and lots of resources on their website, so I'd really recommend um, checking them that um, out. Um, they've got this great book on an introduction to uh, bumblebees. And um, if you decide to take things a little bit further, um, Stephen Falk's uh, Guide to the Bees is excellent. That includes all bees, um, not just a bumblebee, so it has solitary bees in, in there as well. But there's very good keys, lots of photos. Um, Stephen Falk also has a uh, Flickr um, account. So if you just Google Stephen Falk, bumblebees, you'll come up with loads and loads of photos. That's a, a, um, a brilliant online um, resource. And also don't forget if you um, go out and do some recording of bumblebees, um, do please um, send your records in. iRecord, if you're aware of iRecord, is a really um, great one. Um, um, or you can send your uh, uh, records to your local record centre or to the bee, wasp and ant recording scheme. But do, do share your records. They're all you know, really, really useful. So a quick thank you to the people that I have um, um, used their photos of. Um, and then that's, that's it. I am really happy to take some questions now. Um, I'm, I'm quite impressed I've, I've kept to time actually. So yeah, really happy. I'll look through the chat. If anyone wants to unmute themselves at this point, then please um, do feel free. But I'll just have a little look in the chat and see what we've got.